Hey everyone, it's Kelvin. Uh, welcome back to my watercolor videos for Procreate. So today I've got a really uh, interesting but simple project for you guys. Uh, basically we're going to paint this kind of banana leaf. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to add some interesting kind of dynamic lighting to it later on. And I really think this is an important effect because it does give some kind of sense of uh, emotion or atmosphere to your paintings. So the first thing I'm going to do is start out with a new blank watercolor paper texture and I'm going to use the normal brush kit uh, and I'll put links to both the texture and the brushes uh, in the description down below. I'm going to start off by making a quick sketch. So I'm going to grab the HB pencil and I'm just going to do basically a really simple banana leaf shape which is sort of like a tapering leaf but it's a little bit lopsided. Uh, it's, it's pretty parallel and it doesn't come to a point though. It comes to this kind of lobe shape like that. So there we go, that's our starting sketch. And um, I wanna show you a cool trick we can do with the abstract round brush. So let me add some color to this. Uh, I'll make a new layer. Um, I'm gonna put the sketch on top and I'll lower the transparency just so I can barely see it. And I've already chosen uh, the abstract round brush over here uh, and sort of a slightly dark desaturated green color and it looks like this and you'll notice with the abstract round brush you know it's very consistent the color is very consistent it does have some light and dark uh, but I want to show you a really cool trick to get some uh, sort of interesting color variation there uh, in the brush strokes so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to grab the abstract round brush and I'm going to click it after it's been selected basically I'm going to click it again like that and this will bring up all the brush options usually it'll start up at this tab uh, but go down here to Color Dynamics, and then under the heading Stroke Color Jitter, go ahead and change the hue to about 25% like that. And then the lightness, do the same thing, about up to 25%. And this will add a unique effect I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but when we're all done with this painting, and if you want the abstract round brush to sort of go back to normal, just set the hue and the lightness back to zero. Just basically undo this, uh, and then click Done. But I'm going to click Done to apply those changes. And now when I use the brush, every time I stroke it like this, it's going to give you a slightly different shade of green. Uh, and I'm going to use that effect to my advantage uh, in this uh, leaf here. So let me undo those. And I'm just going to roughly fill in the sketch like this. And every time I lift off the brush, it gives me a different color. So I'm just going to do some random shapes like that. And I'll do the other side the same way. And then as a final touch, I'm just going to sort of go along the outline of the sketch, just really roughly like that. So we've got all of our color laid down. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the water blender brush, a pretty small size. Uh, I'm just gonna go in there and sort of blend the, these colors in the direction of the grain of the banana leaf, which a feather is quite steep, like here's the stem, a feather is like that. A banana leaf is nearly perpendicular, so really light angle, just like this. And I'll do the other side the same way. I would say the only trick to this is to make sure sort of where they all meet in the middle, make sure that sort of follows the center of the leaf here, that little center line there. So I'm happy with the way this looks. Um, I'm going to trim it down using the eraser brush so it sort of matches the sketch. So I'm going to set the eraser brush to the fine liner pen and a pretty large size actually. And I'll just go in there and just sort of erase around where my sketch is. There we go, and then I can turn off the sketch now. Uh, and then I can go in there and just carefully erase this uh, completely. And for the stem, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful uh, with a smaller eraser brush. And then at the very bottom of the stem here, I'm gonna chop it off kind of at a uh, sort of V shape like that. So we've got basically all the color laid out. Now I wanna do the center stem here, and I'm gonna do that with the selection tool. So I'll set that to freehand, and then I'll select the bottom of the stem all the way up to the very center of that lobe, and then back again, uh, and just sort of catch the outside of that stem, just like that. And on a banana leaf, the stem is typically lighter than the actual leaf. So I'll go to the hue, saturation, and brightness, and adjust that selection so it's a little bit brighter. I'll desaturate it a little bit, and then try to introduce a little bit of yellow in there with the hue slider. And maybe I'll make it a little bit brighter. There we go, that's pretty good. So now I've got the basic outline of our banana leaf, the basic shape here. 
Now I wanna give it some curve and I'm gonna do that with the selection tool as well. So, so with that selection tool set to freehand, I'll just select basically half the leaf like this and I won't feather it or anything. I'll go to hue saturation and brightness and just brighten that side of the leaf just so it's kind of weirdly dark, just a little bit too dark. And then I'll grab that selection tool again, this time selecting sort of down the middle of that leaf. And then I'll feather it out quite a bit, just about like that. And then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll try to restore the color by brightening it up. And we've done one half now, so we've got the light fading to black. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but it's gonna be the, the sort of the inverse. So this time I'm gonna grab the selection tool and select the right side of the leaf like that. I won't feather it. I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll brighten it up a little bit. Then I'll deselect it, grab the selection tool again, and just like we did before, I'll select down the center of that side of the leaf. I'll feather it out quite a bit, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll darken this down, uh, trying to match the level of darkness we see over here. So now we've got some sort of uh, dynamic curve going on with our leaf here. So now I'm gonna do the splits uh, with the eraser brush. So I'll set that to fine liner pen. And I'm not gonna get carried away with it. I'm just gonna try to add two or three splits. And I'll do that at a pretty large size. Uh, and I'll just start really lightly. Um, and then I'll just press harder and harder until I sort of exit the side of the leaf. Just keep in mind the angle of this. It's not like a feather. A feather is really steep. A banana leaf is almost perpendicular in some cases. There we go. And I'll do the other side, but in a different place. And don't be afraid to do two really close together like that. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. I don't really like to add too many of them, otherwise it just looks kind of worn out. Now, when you paint something like this uh, with watercolor on paper, uh, what tends to happen is, since you don't have an eraser brush, you need to paint each of these sort of sections individually. And the way you, you know, that ends up looking like these don't all have the same color. So we can kind of fake that with the selection tool. So I'm gonna make a selection that just catches uh, these individual segments. So I've made a selection that doesn't touch that one, doesn't touch that one. It just sort of goes in, selects the end of that and then back. And I'll darken that. There we go. And I'll do another one over here. Just selecting into that split and then over like this and then exiting out the other split. So I'll add these two sections of darkness and then I'll add a few of lightness here. So let's go in and do like that. And I'll just use add and uh, use another one over here. There we go, that's good enough. And I'll go to hue, saturation and brightness and I'll just brighten those two areas, but not too much. I don't wanna make them disappear. So maybe like that, then I'll desaturate it just a little bit. And it kind of looks like uh, camouflage actually, but if I go in there with the water blender brush, pretty small size and just sort of blend up those hard edges. Uh, you can kind of see what this effect is uh, doing here. It's a pretty subtle thing, but I think it makes a big difference because it starts to make it look like these were painted independently uh, when the level of dark and light doesn't match from split to split. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I want to add a highlight up the stem there. So I'll grab the selection tool and just carefully select like as thin of a selection as I can make up one side of that stem like that. I won't feather it. I'll just go right to hue, saturation, and brightness. Then I'll raise the brightness. There we go. I can just barely see that in a few areas. And then I'll lower the saturation, sort of making it go closer to white. And that just adds kind of a hard highlight along the stem, making it a little bit more 3D. And uh, this could be done. I mean, this has really nice shades, really nice color. Uh, but I want to show you how to make this sort of jump out a little bit more by adding some lighting. And the lighting is going to sort of trick your eye into thinking this is part of a bigger scene. So in order to do that, uh, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm just gonna turn off the leaf for now. And I'll grab a really light yellow color like this. And the abstract round brush still has that setting. So every time I draw, uh, it'll be a little bit of a different color. So I'm gonna turn that off. So I'll just tap on it, go to color dynamics, and then just set the hue and the lightness of the stroke jitter uh, down to zero. Uh, and now it'll function just like normally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some sort of ghost leaves. So I'll just quickly make a sort of palm leaf like this. Uh, and then over here, I'll make just like a straight bar. There we go. And I'll sharpen some of these because they did end up a little bit too rounded. 
but I don't want to spend too much time on this uh, because I'm going to blur it out later on. Okay, that's good enough. And now if I turn on my leaf, you can see I have this sort of weird uh, yellow leaves uh, in front of it. So what I'm going to do is set the transparency to add, and then I'll lower it, maybe around 20%, something like that. And this adds an illusion of sort of light filtering through leaves, but I can make this a little bit better by going over to the magic wand and then clicking Gaussian Blur. And as long as those sort of um, ghost leaves are selected, as long as that layer is selected, uh, I can use the Gaussian Blur by clicking and dragging. And as I drag from one side to the other, you can see this blue bar sort of races across. Uh, that's the level of blur. And I think I want to blur these um, pretty low, maybe around 8%. I think that looks pretty good. And then I think I'll make this a little bit brighter. There we go. I like the way that looks. And because our highlights are on a different layer, I can grab the arrow tool and just sort of reposition that until I can create kind of a scene uh, that has the right feeling. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And what you'll notice here is in this case, I sort of, I guess I sort of blew out the highlights and I, I don't really like that look, um, especially on the camera that's probably like totally white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my leaf uh, and then I'm gonna make a selection in the area where it's just too blown out, just like that. And then I'll feather that out just a tiny bit. I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness and I'll just darken that until I sort of recover those highlights. Maybe desaturate it a little bit. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And there we go, this would be done. Um, this is how I'd paint a simple banana leaf and then also how I'd add some kind of dynamic uh, posable lighting. And uh, I really like the way this looks because it sort of gives you like a hint that there's a, there's a bigger scene here, there's a bigger jungle, uh, and this is just like a small part of it. And uh, I think it really captures like kind of almost like a moment in time and a really cool look. So let me know what you think about this in the comments. And also let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. But uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.